and it creates a three-dimensional model, digital model, of the landscape. Learning is still part of Mike Heffern's experience at St. Thomas. That is practical training. As a member of alumni groups, like the Old Guard Committee, for more than two decades. But the biggest lesson he learned came in 1954, after the sophomore was named sports editor of the Aquin. Well, I suppose you could say it was a mistake that I got that job. And Don Lydon looked at me and said, well, who are you replacing? And I said, well, Tom McDonald. And he said, well, for gosh sakes, what's going on here? But it did, it changed my life. It changed everything I've done in my life since. What he did at St. Thomas was graduate in 1957 with a degree in business administration. The stint on the Aquin always stayed with him. Well, it taught me that I could write, which is something I didn't know when I came to school. And that served me really well throughout my career at the fair. Have a good time. Heffron spent most of his working life with the Minnesota State Fair. For the last 20 years, he was its CEO. It was a wonderful job. It was everything I ever hoped for. I never knew when I went to school, high school, college, that I would enjoy my life of work as much as I have. The man who ran the great Minnesota get-together <laughs> is still getting together with a class of 57. We forget everybody between <laughs> one month to the next, so we have to introduce ourselves again. It's a kind of a brotherhood. These people you can feel you can sit down and call you know anytime about anything and any problem some of the fellows who's a, who have shown up for lunch have not been with us I, I wasn't really with them in class when I was in school so they're brand new friends but they got their degree when I did and we walked down the aisle together I guess but I didn't know them it can be a surprise in the sense that you get to know someone you didn't know before how you been, Lee? Lee Hallgren is an example. What I see in Mike is a passion for something that he believes in. So with your help, they will be able to create a scholarship that hopefully in a few years will reach that $50,000 mark. And that passion is for scholarships from the old guard and the class of 57. If you were a boarder, you could get your room, your food, and your tuition for $1,000. And I thought that's the, most, that's the most ridiculous figure I ever heard. You could add a zero to that today and it wouldn't be enough. That's why his class is still giving money for scholarships, with criteria basic and broad enough to include most students. You know, a student 20 years from now is going to get a scholarship from the class of 57 and say, I wonder what those guys were like. Who were they? Who they are are college graduates, many the first in their family. There's something about having gone to a first-class school that makes you feel kind of important about yourself. And so I've always carried that with me. It's kind of like that ring you wear or the badge you wear on your suit. Um, but it's more than that. It sticks with you in your stomach, I think. Apparently, I'm going to get the Lavin Award. You are? I'm not supposed to tell anybody. By sticking with his university, Isn't that nice? He's won the Lavin Award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. To have my name appended to anything that has to do with Father Lavin is a wonderful thing for me.